Today we're going to take a look at some of the data processing for Lab 5 with Thermochemistry Hess's Law Lab. And one of the requirements is that we're trying to come up with what is the actual mixing temperature when we put the two solutions together. Um, notice we didn't take a data point at zero seconds. And it takes a little bit of time for the thermometers to um, reach the temperature, uh, to start reading the temperature correctly. So you'll notice that our first couple data points might be kind of um, not great. And so that's the whole purpose of this extrapolation backwards. This uh, that I'm showing you here is an Excel. We can make a plot in um, the Google spreadsheet. Um, Excel I like a little bit better because you can put your um, equation of a line and you can edit. Um, there may be ways to do that in. Um, the Google form, uh, sorry, Google spreadsheet, but it's not quite as obvious and clear, so we'll look at it both ways. Uh, you could draw these by hand, but honestly, if we have these tools readily available to make nice plots, we should use them. You can then take a ruler to it and um, extrapolate backwards if you want to. First of all, what I did is I typed in my time and temperature data, and so that would be the first thing that I would recommend doing. Notice that I'm labeling the tops of the columns with the units. So the time is in seconds, the temperature is in degrees Celsius. You don't want to put any non-numerical values into these cells. The other thing is, like this data point, originally when I typed it in, what's going to happen is uh, Excel chops off, doesn't understand significant figures. So it actually gave me this 35 originally when I typed it in. So there's a way to adjust that. You can either go into uh, formatting somewhere up here, um, or I have my shortcut, um, which I can use to add on a decimal point. So again, when I make sure all my numbers have the same precision that I actually recorded them with. To make the graph, um, we typically want to use XY scatter plots. So I'm going to select my two columns of data. So usually I type in the first column that I want to be the X values and the second column that I want to be the Y values. Highlight the data. Do not include the titles. And then I'm going to go up to Insert and Chart. And again, depending on which version of Excel you're using, this might look a little bit different. Um, but you should be able to find it under Insert. And so the chart that I want is the XY scatter, so you notice the dot picture. So I'll click on that. And uh, in this case, I'm not going to connect the points. In some cases, you might want to connect the points, depending on what you're doing. But I'm going to leave those as is, like that. Um, for making titles, um, obviously you can just click right on this and start typing. In terms of adding axes titles, you should absolutely label your axes, again, with what it is and what the units are. So you can see the one that I already did here, how I did time and temperature with the units. And you can, when you click on the, this is the design and format tools. Um, when I click on the graph, I can go to add chart element and fix that from there. If I want to add more grid lines, I can do that here, so adding major or minor. Um, and then I can also, if I need to, edit the axis and the range. So in this case, I'm actually going to want to make my graph go up to 35 and a half. I'll show you why that is momentarily. Let me just get rid of this graph. Okay, so here's everything labeled for the example that we're looking at. So again, I want to basically omit these first couple of points that um, aren't exactly in line with the rest of the data. And that's because we know, again, our thermometer is adjusting. We're not just getting in the habit of erasing data points that don't look good, but that's what the directions actually tell us to do for answering our question. So that is what we're going to do. And what I can do in Excel is, um, well, first of all, I can see my data is highlighted here when I've got the plot area selected. And I can actually kick out these this first point so that it's not being plotted anymore. And um, from there I'm going to, if I click on my data, I'm right clicking on the data, and I'm going to add a trend line. And so this actually draws my straight line for me. And if I select down here, select display equation on chart, this gives me the equation of the line. So I'm looking for that straight line relationship. So this is the slope, and this is the y-intercept, as you're familiar with from math class. Um, you can also choose to uh, where is it? You can also choose to um, include the R value. So I'm going to go back to this and do that. Now, of course, it's doing it again. So the R value kind of tells you how close you are to actually fitting a straight line. And since we do have a little bit of variation in our points, uh, notice that this R squared value 
Um, the closer it is to 1, the better the equation is at fitting the data. And we know it's not perfect, so that's fine. But um, what we're going to do is, um, from this, again, if I didn't have the trend line, if I wasn't given the equation, you could draw with a ruler um, up to where the points, the straight line, seems to be intersecting the y-axis. So you could get your intercept point from there. And that's going to be our t-mix value that we're looking for in this particular lab. Um, in this case, I'm just going to use it right off the equation here. It's 35.5. Notice if I had left in these top points, what that does to my equation. So notice the r-squared value horribly less than 1 in this case. Um, and notice this line is skewed way down in my intercept points, 35.2. So we definitely want to omit this first point in drawing that line. So again, if you're just doing this by hand, um, you know, the first data point that you have, just kind of ignore it, and the other ones will start to form kind of a straight line and, and draw your line according or along that. If I want to take a look at what this is going to look like in the Google spreadsheet, and here I have my data um, arranged the same way, so again, no text labels in the data squares or the data cells, and again, I can highlight this data, so how I got this graph in here, um, insert, and then go to chart. And again, we want to select the type of chart to be the scatter plot. And these small dots, there's no reason for these big, gigantic dots in our world. You can click here to change the title. Let's see here. Right click, you can add the titles and labels for the axes. If I want to change how high up this maximum goes. So on that other chart that I was looking at in Excel, I actually already adjusted this to um, so again, if I wanted to draw with my ruler, then I've got that point displayed on here, and um, you can, straight line actually kind of goes up to that 3.5 marking. So uh, again, this is um, similar. I don't remember how to, or if you can, put the trend line on here uh, on the Google spreadsheet, but you can at least make the graph very easily, very simply. It's super fast to make, and then you're not using graph paper and being all old school with you know having to mark out the increments along the, the axes. So just do it here or in Excel, and then you can um, come up with your equation for your line, and um, or at least get your intercept point, and that will be your T-mix for the Lab 5 calculations.